what is going on guys uh today we're going to talk about this whole how do we do chord charts in pro presenter from scratch uh with any song we want to totally customizable without having to pay for any additional bits or pieces um so check the description below uh you'll see timestamps and you'll see a download link uh you'll probably want to utilize both of those things we're gonna get started with how we make this thing get into pro presenter how do we install it we'll start there so uh stay tuned we'll get to it all right here we are installation stupid simple um here's the theme that you have just downloaded from me uh that you found in the description below we're gonna get this into pro presenter Open up your file explorer, navigate to the ProPresenter file, which is under Documents, ProPresenter, Themes. This is where we need to put it. Um, take that file that, that I gave you, drag it into that Themes section. Now we got to open up ProPresenter, um, which I guess I didn't have open. Uh, it'll take it just a second, but it pulls in as a theme. Uh, we don't want it to be a theme. We're never going to apply this to our main displays, our center displays, our live stream out, but we're never going to apply it to any of that. We're only going to make it a stage display. But we have to pull it in as a theme, because I haven't found a way to go straight to a stage display. I don't know where those files are held or anything like that. Um, so under that theme editor, um, uh, looks like I've already... Oh, it pulled it in already. Right. Okay. So we have a couple, yours is going to be full, you'll have all the default themes. I cleared it out just to make this tutorial a little bit easier. It's going to be this one with no name on it. Because these are really folders that contain a bunch of stuff, um, and we just pulled in a single. So once we got that, take all that, control C to copy it. Um, jump to the stage editor. <laughs> Add yourself a new layout, blank layout. Control V to paste it in. There you are. Uh, we don't need to keep it in the uh, folder here anymore, so jump back, documents, pro presenter, themes, and delete the theme. We don't need it there anymore. That way you won't accidentally apply it to, to anything crazy. Um, so we got it in there. Jump back to show, go to your stage screen part here, and just select it. Uh, it just changed. We're in. Um, next we'll go over, how do we make it work? What does it do? What does it look like? All right, how do we make it run? Um, so it's here. When we when we start clicking through slides, we got core, we got words that come up, which is fine. You can utilize this display. I use it for everything now. Even if I don't have chord charts there, this is my default. This is what we do. Then I have the same thing that I always use, and if I want to add chords, <coughs> we don't have to do anything different. It's right there at our fingertips. Um, Right-click a slide, edit slide. You can also hit the little edit tab at the top, either one. Uh, our chords go in this slide notes section. Um, stick around till the end of the video. I'll go through an in-depth how does this function on the back end sort of stuff. Um, but all that you really need right now, how do we get it happening? Um, so here we are. You probably want some sort of intro. So on this first slide, I'll put key uh, D time uh, four four uh, and intro just holds that D. Um, and we can see what that looks like on that first one. That's what it says there. Um, and you can you can really clean this up a little bit if we want to do uh, um, something like this. Uh, however, that is supposed to look uh, something like that. You can make this whatever you want. I don't remember the musical notation for that, but. Um, we can see that we're just supposed to repeat this a couple times. Um, and actually, yeah, it's, it's this. That, that, this. And then when we end, it's this. You repeat that as many times as you want. Something along those lines. Do however you want to do that. Um, and it's showing up there. So when they click that graphic slide to start with, that's what you're going to get. Um, I, this really shouldn't be an intro slide here. This should be an instrumental. That way, when we're in the middle of the song, this doesn't come back up. Just a little tiny bit there. But we'll jump back over, edit slide. Um, pull up your chord chart for it. So, glorious day chord chart. Use this one. 
So over the word buried is a D. So how do we do that? We come to the slide notes. We add a D. Um, we're going to need to move it over because it needs to line up with that word buried. Um, jump back to show. Click it. We're pretty close on that. Um, move on to the next chord. Buried carries a B minor. Now the carry is on the second line. So jumps to line two. It's a B minor seven. Carries just past that. So we kind of line it up. See buried's here. Here, carried is just to the right of that. So we're going to put the B minor just to the right. Uh, that'll be a way that you can get it fairly close. I didn't go quite enough. But using that little trick, uh, you can get things pretty, pretty close on that first try. Uh, there are... <clears throat> you do have a little bit of... See, I went too far. So we'll go back one. Jump back at show. Do this for all your slides. That's the basic gist of it. Um, just edit that slide note section, get your chords in there. And last, but certainly not least, we're going to look at the back end. How does this thing function? Uh, so we have our current slide text and slide notes. This is similar to what we have by default. We have the current text, next slide text. That's what we got to start with. Um, so we use that same sort of thing, current slide, next slide. We added the notes section. Well, actually, we used the multi-tracks template to start with and did a, did a little bit of stuff here and there. Um, as we went over before, we're adding our uh, chords in the notes section. So this is what allows them to come up. Um, we have the group section just to pretty things up a little bit. This timer in the corner, do whatever you want with it. Delete it, add whatever you want to. I use this uh, as a countdown for when our rehearsal is supposed to end. That way, when we're on Sunday morning doing our run through or whatever, we know how much time we got left. Just always run it up there on the back wall for us. Um, so if you want to do some editing to this, uh, such as making the, the next slide maybe smaller, making the current slide text bigger, however you want to do that, um, you can do it. Just highlight whatever it is, jump to text, hit the little gear icon. Um, the important thing to know, whatever you do to this, your current text and your current notes have to match, um, specifically on our paragraph and our character spacing. Um, character spacing is left and right, how much space is between each letter. Paragraph is when you do a line break, how much gap is there. Now there has to be a gap, which we use 60 here. There has to be a gap because we have to leave room for the second line of the notes to come in between. Um, so if we do any changes here, the notes section has to match. Also a 10 spacing and a 60 paragraph. Same thing for the next section. The current slide text, current slide notes, their settings have to match. I added 10 and 60 again. Um, they have to match each other. Um, the current and the next don't need to match, but the, the, the text and the notes have to match each other. I hope that's not too confusing. Um, the different sections can be different, but the, the notes and the text have to match each other. So if you want to make this smaller or bigger, you can do it. Just make sure everything stays the same. Uh, and that way it'll, it'll, it'll work just fine for you. So that's kind of the back end of of what's going on in here. That's the only important thing if you ever want to make some changes. You can customize anything or else around it. If you don't like the groups, get rid of them, resize a little bit, you can make it happen. But that's the back end. That's how we make it run. Um, you'll notice uh, one thing I didn't mention before. If you repeat sections, you don't have to repeat the notes. The notes follow. If we repeat the chorus, the chords are going to repeat as well. Um, so just to make things a little bit simpler. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Uh, PM me on Facebook. This should be posted up there as well. Uh, do whatever you need. I'm happy to help. Just reach out.